it looks like everybody's here. Usually nobody's here yet. I didn't set up everything in the background. So bear with me, guys. <laughs> I got to put all this stuff in the machine. I think I got everything working. Let's test that out. Hey guys, how you doing? Sorry, I didn't want to be late like last week. I think I still need some bubbles in the bubble machine. <laughs> I think I got enough. It's starting to spit in my face. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Little John's Yarns. I'm Alicia. Thank you for joining me here today on this live stream. And thank you for being patient with me as I'm setting up everything in the background. So today we are going to be talking about 30 crochet hacks and tips. But before we get into any of that, let's say hi to everybody who has joined us here today. Let's see who's there. Hey, Reggie, how you doing? J-Hook Crochet. Um, who else is here? Tell me what time is it and where are you from? And I have brand new moderators here today. So, of course, you know from last week, we have Reggie, a.k.a. Uh, J-Hook Crochet. We also have, I don't know if she's here yet, her name is Letty, but she's known as Aquarian Queen. And we have one more new one. I don't know what her uh, face, her YouTube name is, but let's we'll see her pop up in here in a little bit. But she's from Florida. So welcome all of our uh, brand new moderators. And thank you for helping me on everything right now. And I see Dieta. She already knows what's up. Cheers. If this is your first time joining me, this is not coffee. This is not tea. On every single live stream, we are sipping and stitching. I like to drink wine. So what I'm drinking this week, I am nowhere near affiliated with any of these things I drink every week. It's just something I like. We are drinking Franzia's wine. It's called Sunset Blush. It's a sweet wine. This is what I had last week. It's running a little bit low. It's time to re-up it. But I love sweet wine. That's what I'm drinking here today. And look, I love New York. I'm not from New York. I'm from Pennsylvania. But if anybody's here from New York, big shout outs to you. My daughter got me this when she went on a field trip on her senior year last year to New York. And she brought me home a mug. Okay. So what's going on? Oh, um, some hat. Well, of course, we always talk about happy mail. I didn't receive any happy mail in the mail yet. And Reggie, I know you said you have a happy mail coming, but I guess it takes a long time to something ship from Germany all the way over to Pennsylvania in the United States. But I'm still looking out for it. But I did receive an email from um, Gloria Jordan. She sent in some tips to contribute to this whole live stream. So I'm not going to tell you what her tip is yet. It's going to be in the list of all of these. Oh, and you can also... Uh, if you want to happy mail me, you can do it through um, the good old post office mail, or you can email me at littlejohnyarns.com. Not littlejohnyarns.com, littlejohnyarns at gmail.com. So the address is over there. And as usual, I always um, have a super chat. I don't know if you can see the picture right here. What Super Chat is, it's a way you can help donate to any of your favorite influencers or crocheters or pattern makers or anybody else that's doing live chats or whatever. But you'll see a little button. There we go. Over to the screen. If you're on a desktop, it's desktop is shaped like a dollar. You can click that. If you're on your mobile device, it's down below and it's shaped like a dollar. And when you donate to that, it helps me continue make brand new patterns and videos and bring you awesome tips every single week. And when you do, I have this stuff set up in the background. I'm getting better and better with this every single week. So it's set up in tiers. If you donate between $4.99 and down, the disco light goes off. If you donate $9.99 and down, the bubbles and the disco light goes off. If you donate $10 and up, we get the balloon with the big happy face goes off, the bubble goes off, and the disco lights will all go off at the same time. So we'll wait and see if all of that works. All right, so what's going on in here? I'm gonna check the chat real quick before we start. We have Michelle, she's from Washington, DC, my time zone, so it's two o'clock. Who else do we get? We got uh, Nora, hello from Arizona. And Koala, she says, oh, did I pronounce that right? Koala, I did pronounce it right, I think I did. It's 105 here in Bangladesh. A.M. in the morning, wow, it's already tomorrow. I guess it's today for you, but tomorrow for me. That's wild. But hi from way over there, I didn't imagine. 
who else do we have? We have Lily, good night to other Z. Um, night Owl is high from Tennessee. All right, so let's hop into all of this good stuff. So I tried to separate this into groups because there's over 30 tips. So it might be a lengthy video and I didn't want to do this all by hand. So we're going to be looking at some other crochet uh, YouTubers videos. I didn't have all the uh, time to get all this set up and all the um, information that I pull from other YouTube YouTubers, their information is going to be down below. But I separated this into like stitch markers, ergonomic hooks, yarn bowls, yarn hacks and special stitches and at the end like special tips that you may need to know so let's see how good am i doing on these stops so first we are going to look at stitch markers all right stitch i have all of this stuff set up over here my thing big thing is stitch markers could be anything of course you can go and buy your own little stitch markers like these and this one right here this stitch marker was actually given to me by mom of 12 she is a crochet youtuber if she's sometimes in the live stream check her out say hello if she's in a chat with us but you don't have to have things like this you know what? It's great for a stitch marker paper clips scrap yarn and you know what I always have laying around bobby pins stitch markers can be anything so that is basically one of my first set of easy tips so what's next oh uh how to keep your uh you know how when you finish your lad your crochet project oh luckily i have something right here and you're completely done with your crochet project and you don't want your item to unravel you can take your stitch marker clipping it at the end or you can take a bobby pin such as this, put it at the end, so your work will not unravel. Oh, and here is another tip to keep your granny squares from unraveling. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes, not behind the scenes, but you're able to see what's going on back here, but it's gonna video that we're all going to look at. Let's see. Okay, it's working. Let me take that stitch marker thing down because you'll never be able to see. Okay, I took that down. And this is gonna be a tip on how to keep your granny squares from unraveling. Here we go, we're gonna be looking at tips. This one is from a new crochet designs. I absolutely love her. I've seen her on um, YouTube millions of times. This tip was actually pretty nifty. I didn't, I never thought about it. Well, let me show you exactly what it is. And sometimes it happens with granny from the middle, especially when you begin with a magic circle. So I love taking some fabric glue. I love it for so many reasons. It is transparent, it is washable, and if I take my glue and I put a little drop right where I fasten I don't know why I've off, never thought of that before. Make sure that it is stuck together and doesn't unravel. Great tip. I love that one. I've never thought about it in a million years, but have you ever had one of your like granny squares unravel from the center oops i took myself off wrong thing up oh, how do i get this off there we go i've never thought about it because i've i've always been afraid for that center part to open so i thought that's pretty nifty let's see um oda says she uses diaper pins that's a pretty good idea oh, i'm sorry i'm dropping stuff down below Let's see what else. J Hook Crochet says, I have never owned any stitch markers before. Some were gifted to me last year. Always use scrap yarn. I've never, I mean, I was gifted some beautiful, like I said, this was from Mama 12. She's a YouTuber. I was gifted some beautiful stitch markers before, but I've always been super cheap. I just use the random yarn that's always laying around my craft room. So I would just use those to mark anything that I was using. Denise, she says, howdy from Minnesota. I've always used bobby pins, usually my go-to stitch marker. That's me. I usually have like a thousand bobby pins stuck in my hair. So bobby pins and crochet hooks and regular pins, they're all stuck in my hair. So I just usually pull one of those out and use it as a stitch marker. It's super easy and I always have a ton. I was also have a daughter, so therefore we always have these just laying around everywhere. Well, let's see. 
What else? Dieta says, Lopez, Chris, at Lopez Christina, Alicia is here every Saturday at 11 p.m. PS time. Well, P time, Pacific time. I am every single Tuesday. I'm also, at the end of this whole live stream, I'm going to need all of your help. I love to come every Saturday with just some good information and knowledge to help you guys. Let it be crochet hacks and tips or growing your own uh, crochet business. But I need some help figuring out some more topics. So leave those comments afterwards. So help me out with these. So we got the bubbles going. Oh, thank you so much. Who donated? Let's get this party started. Thank you so much, Carmen. I appreciate the donation. I guess $4.99. You get the bubbles and you get the uh, disco lights. For the past couple weeks, I didn't figure out how to uh, get the bubbles not blowing on my machine. Somebody was smart to tell me that I need to turn my bubble machine the opposite way so I won't get my uh, computer all soaking wet. But thank you so much for the donation. And everybody, Carmen, lift your cups and let's give her a cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Mm. I hope I don't drink too much because... This is it. And for us in Pennsylvania, we can't buy any wine anyplace else at um, after on Sundays. It's weird. Only in Pennsylvania are we not allowed to buy wine on Sundays or any type of alcohol on Sundays. We don't even have alcohol inside the stores. Oh, oh my goodness. I see. Amanda, I, my disco light didn't go off. Thank you so much for the donation. Amanda says, keep it up. And we got a little dancing cartoon. Everybody, give her a cheers. I appreciate it so much. Amanda is actually my co-worker. I, I'm not at work right now, as you can see. And she's one of my favorite ones. Thank you so much. Shh, don't tell anybody that you're one of my favorite co-workers. Shh, and make sure they're not watching. <laughs> All right, let's see what else is going on here in the chat. And I'm not, why didn't that go off? Maybe things aren't set right. So, Boo. We got uh, Lopez Christina. She gave some cheers, and so did Lily Amanda. Let's see. Dieta said, how about discussing different types of crocheting, like hairpin, overlay, pineapple, stainless glass, stained glass symbol. I don't know that one in micro. Those last two, I don't know. I'm going to have to do some researching for myself. But let's hop into the next tips. I got a whole list of them. And once I get to the bottom, those will be some more interactive stitches that we can work on together. So make sure you have some yarn and crochet nearby. All right. So now where are we on our journey? Do, do, do. Okay, I found the button. <laughs> We're going to be talking about like ergonomic crochet hooks. Uh, I was supposed to have some land around here. Here we go. An ergonomic crochet hook. Not everybody can afford these. There's more expensive ones like the Addy Swing Hooks. Not a lot of people like those. Or there's the ones, the Clovers, or you can buy like the generic ones. But if you're just new to crocheting and you don't want to like uh, purchase any of these, here are a couple of good tips. So let's see. The first tip is going to be, let me take this down real quick. Uh -oh. from the artist mind if you can't afford to get um the ergonomic hooks you can get some type um some tape and pencil grips i think that's a great idea i actually recommended these before in um, one of my crochet haul videos for ergonomic crochet hook substitutions so since i got this right here let me pull one of these out see i had a problem I didn't set up with my crochet hooks. Oh, everybody knows I have my horrible crochet hook basket. Let's get a good one where I keep everything in here where I can barely find any type of hooks. So what they're talking about, take any type of crochet hook, place it on here. And you know what? It's not snug enough, but she was smart enough to know. Just wrap it in type and you have your own affordable ergonomic crochet hook. All right. We had another tip from... Epic Space Dorito. I took some spare yarn and glued one end to the standard cheap metal crochet hook and twisted it around and around until I created a handle that gave enough grip when my hands could <laughs> when my hands would get sweaty in the hot months. This was this was then this was when I first started, so I hadn't invested any crochet hooks yet. 
I think that's a great idea. You know what? My crochet, my crochet glue gun, that's what I should call it, but my glue gun has taken me through thick and thin and have saved me many times before. But what they were mentioning, just a dab of glue on the end and a wrap yarn around it. And that's the genius idea because I know when I'm crocheting a long time, and especially when it's hot, I get sweaty hands. I'm a sweaty palmed girl, I suppose. But that's a great way to absorb that icky sweat. And you know what? You can just cut that off and rewrap another thing again. Oh, um, checking in the uh, comments. Daryl Lynn, I, I'm in Maine. Can't buy alcohol until noon on Sundays. You know what? I think because there's 50 states in the United States, only two have some type of... Uh, the, the state regulates alcohol and Maine and Pennsylvania's it. The rest of the United States can buy alcohol in the grocery stores. We don't have alcohol in grocery stores. You just have to go specifically to the wine and spirits to get it. Madeline Jones, she says the pencil grips are fabulous, especially in the summer months when crocheting. Think so. Not too lost, one, two, three. My absolute favorites are Tulips Etmo Cooks. So great in the hands. So there's been so many people that's told me that I need to invest in these crochet hooks or I need to like do a good review in it. You're like the 100th person that said that. So I'm going to have to try that out. Oh, Marwill just showed up. Welcome back, Marwill. She says, hi, everybody. Uh, Fairy, I'm late. You're not late. It's only a couple minutes long. We've only gotten to the first section of our 30 plus crochet hacks and tips. All right. Uh, oh, this one is one of mine. The finger yarn guide. You ever seen, um, you can get them on Amazon, Wish, or whatever, the little tiny finger yarn guys that go on your finger? They usually, they're not expensive, but you can get them for like two to five dollars. But I have a video that I'll show you shortly how to make your own finger yarn guide from items from your local Dollar Tree or wherever you're at. I'm sure everybody has their own little dollar type store. This one, I get six feet of wire. And I was able to make my own little yarn ring. So I'm going to show you that video real quick. Okay, let me scroll down. There we go. I'm always clicking the wrong buttons. There it is. I try to keep these all in order. All right. This is just a quick video. I'll show you Our what it is. With materials that you can buy from any bought from my local Dollar Tree yep. and a pair of pliers. Okay, here's the meat of it. Just take a regular little wire. Next, we're going to take our wire and wrap it around a thick cylindrical object. I'm using a boy ergonomic crochet hook, but don't worry what type of base you use. Once it's twisted, it's going to be completely it's adjustable. Right I sound so professional when I'm like talking on the video. Continue to wrap the wire firmly around your base. It's my like One professional hand telephone will be voice. Completely around your base, <laughs> leaving an inch tail on your opposite end. Continue to firmly press around your wire to mold it to your base. And for you only a dollar, pliers, six feet, you can make like sure twenty the of these. Equipment, <laughs> but you for a dollar, take the end of your wire and gently turn it upwards to form your loop. So continue to twist it. And that is it. We're going to twist your loop until it's okay. almost closed. We're going to leave a little <laughs> space so you can work the yarn through. Let's fast forward so we can test it out. And well, as simple as that, and begin crocheting. Voila! Now you don't have to worry about buying your own. So what you guys think of that one? Nifty, huh? Let me take that. Oh, okay, I managed. All right, let's see what's going on in the chat. Oh, hey, Kim Crochet. Now she says, hi, Alicia. Hey, how you doing, Kim? Uh, let's see. Madeline Jones. I can't use eco hooks. Maybe because I only use season baits, which I love. I've been using season baits now since the age of 14, and I'm 54. Are the um, eco, echo, am I saying the right, eco hooks, are they more shaped like the boy hooks? Because I am a Susan Bates fan. I just love the shape. Can you see how that shape is real sharp? And let's see if I have, and this shape is more something like a boy hook. I don't like that 
rounded. For me, this type of hook snatches every single stitch perfectly and I don't find myself going in and out. Oh, Aquarian Queen. Hey, how you doing? I, did I see you earlier? I don't think I said hi earlier, but hey, welcome. All right, let's see what else is going in here. Jojo Juju. Everybody, she has an awesome uh, YouTube channel. Her channel is dedicated to circular knitting machines. If you have never heard of a circular knitting machine, I talk about this every single live stream. Make sure you invest in it. That's I, I'm smart. I keep it right next to me because I know no matter what, ever, my disco light came on. Oh, and the bubbles and the bubbles who donated. Oh, is your name pronounced like mine? Elisha? Uh, she says, cheers, watching live every week. Love your videos and live chat. Keep up the awesome hooking. You know what? Everybody raise your cups to Alicia. Cheers. And I love your name because my name's Alicia. Hmm. I love it when the bubbles go off. Okay, let me press the little buttons. Thank you so much for donating. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> The bubbles smell good. These bubbles I got smell like bubble gum. Do you know how hard it is to find bubbles in the dead of winter? Oh my goodness. I was looking everywhere that could I purchase the bubble machine off Amazon. I didn't think I needed to go anywhere special to get those. I'm like, I can just go to the Dollar Tree and pick up some bubbles. If it's not summer, it's almost impossible. I had to find in the back, has went to Rite Aid or summer. I'm like, please, you that's our local pharmacy everything store out this way if you're from out of the United States or local area you might not know what that is but I had to search really hard for those oh Michelle says cheers and show this Sheila oh the light went off again I don't who did I don't see it in my chat who did that thank you so much who is this oh, Christina Brownlee thank you so much from my youngest daughter Mary Beth everybody oh there's bubbles and everything everywhere Oh, my thing didn't go off. Did I... Oh, that's why it didn't go off. Oh, I don't know what's happening. It's disconnecting. <laughs> I'm having all type of technical difficulties, but thank you so much, Christina. Can we all raise our glass and say cheers to Christina? Thank you so much. So up we got Dawn said cheers. Aquarian Queen, she said, I was looking into the adding machines on eBay. Get it. You will not regret it. If you want to learn how to make a hat in under 20 minutes, crazy, right? A knit hat in under 20 minutes. Crank it out. As simple as that. But before we get back into what's going on, I want to make sure my stuff is working. Because it wasn't working correctly. What's going on? I get that to prop it up. Let's test the balloons. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, I think I got it to work. Oh, we got some extra cheers from Lily, Aquarian Queen, Michelle, and Dieta. We got all of those cheers and from Reggie also. Cheers. Okay, where were we? We were on, I did the finger yarn guide. Now we're going to go into the topic of yarn bowls. Let's see where I am on the back end. Yarn hacks. Look, oops, there it is. Yarn bowls. I got words on the screen. I'm so proud of myself. All right. Let's see what the first tip was. We have a... Uh -oh. There we go. We had a tip. Of sh I put a post out on my community chat. If like Guys, if you had any tips, I'm like, please help me. Because I was running dry on some tips. And luckily, a lot of you commented back and gave me some tips I never even thought of. So here is one of the tips. This is from Jay Applebyte. I like to crochet while traveling um, on public transport. I put my yarn into Ziploc bags and partially seal it so only a tiny space is left open. I feed the yarn through that gap. It's portable and my yarn, if my yarn falls on the floor on a bus train, it won't get filthy. I thought that was a great idea. We had a similar one coming from Mar Will, and I'm glad you're here to um, see that you um, your con contribution actually helped because, you know, I was needing help, and luckily you chimed in, and here's what she had to say. And she said, to prevent dust and hair or something on your yarn, put it in a plastic bag and tie them out and pull out just a little in, but pretty much the same thing there. Let's see what else. Do, do, do. 
And we had another one from Marwell. To keep yarn from picking up dust, picking up dust or, or hair, put in a laundry basket and keep the yarn from rolling all over the floor. And also using multiple yarns so you can, ah, I'm having trouble reading this and I haven't even started drinking wine yet. <laughs> and also if using multiple yarn so you can put it in the basket if the yarn has holes push it through the um holes in the basket i've done that a thousand times before there's another thing where i know i'm not supposed to but my husband gets mad i'm not the cook in the house i like to use any type of bowls like this and i can feed the yarn through like marvel said you can put the yarn through multiple holes in your basket or in a colander. Colander, is that what people say? Or strainer, <laughs> whatever part of the world you say, what do you call this? Actually, I think a uh, colander, is that more like uh, Pennsylvanian or uh, strainer? I forget what we call it. But you know how I like to say pop and the rest of the world likes to say soda. What do you like to say pop or soda? So that's weird. <laughs> All right. Oh, there was another one. So you don't have your, you ever know when you're crocheting and you're pulling yarn from the center and once you're pulling so much, your yarn starts to collapse upon itself and it collapses so much, it creates like a knot. There is a trick to that, to fix that for when your yarn collapses upon itself. You stick it in a sock. <laughs> it's simple that, so when you pull and it collapses, it holds everything together and you don't have to worry about that last bit of your yarn getting all knotted up. So that's a great tip. Oh, I've been talking, so let me uh, quench my palate. Mm. And there was another tip that I'm going to show you from a crochet YouTuber. Let me pull her up. I'm always clicking the wrong button. There's the right button. I move over to the side. Let's see if we can find her. I was here. This YouTuber is called Crafters Anonymous, and she's recommending using a two liter uh, pop or soda bottle to create your own a yarn thing. You're gonna wanna wash it out, dry it out, and peel the wrappers and everything up and have it all ready. I'll probably skip around to this because I hate filler when this. people don't because get to the, the basic point. The idea with this hack is we're gonna take the bottom off of the two liter bottle, and then you can drop your yarn down in there, pull the yarn from out here. But the big issue is we want to make sure that the edge of the plastic doesn't snare our yarn. Because yeah. who wants to snag your yarn? That would be a bad thing. I don't. So there's three ways. My personal favorite way is if you use a wood burner. I've got this nice rounded tip. I don't so have one of those. the wood burner is the first one. This is my favorite way because it's so easy. Do you so think easy, the tip of the hot glue always, gun would work? Because you know it's hot. Tip, I wonder. You're working with a wood burner, I should probably try that hat. On a cookie sheet. But that try one of these. So with the wood burner, you're just going to take it and you're going to melt through Okay, bottom, melt, melt, uh, melt. We're not washing all that. The pair of scissors on hand. You can even use your wood burner, melt a whole thing. Okay, honey. Ventilated area and be careful because of the heat of the wood burner. So that is our second method to this hack. And our third and final method is pretty similar to this one we just did, but this one doesn't use the wood burner at all because maybe you don't have one or maybe I you don't have like one. the idea of melting the plastic. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to cut the bottom off the bottom. Okay, she cut the bottom off. Ooh, I like fast forward. Now we got to wet it to dry. And when you do the hot glue, what's nice about it is you can do as much or as little hot glue Oh, so I guess the hot glue gun, since you didn't burn it off, um, it keeps it from being you know, so rough and snaggy. And now our glue is dry and it's ready to go. So this first hack, what I love about it is to provide you a cheap and easy way. Oh, okay. We don't need this anymore. We basically see money. what that is. I thought that's pretty nifty. But how does it not like... I guess it's not sliding. It's, I guess the whole... The two liter slides across the floor itself. All right. So let's get back to my this mug. This hack is also great because you can make multiple bottles and you're working with a bunch oh, of different... Oh, multiple you bottles. Look at that. One, with them and change to I'm glad I didn't cut this off. I like that. You don't have to worry about the balls of yarn getting tangled with each other. And it's a nice way to keep your balls organized. That's pretty nifty. I probably tripped somebody in my family because <laughs> I have it running across the room. There we go. Let's... Do I take that out? Okay. I'm getting good at clicking these buttons behind the scene. Now let's see where I am. Do, 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 do. Are we still on yarn bowls? So now we're moving more into the yarn hacks. Where are we at? Uh oh, I missed somebody's. 
we missed one from Ingrid Pineapple. I don't want to exclude anybody. I have all these lined up perfectly in sequence, so I'm not getting lost. She says, I'm going to plus um, one on Mar Will, who mentioned her favorite one using a laundry basket as a yarn bowl. Especially great if you have pets and if you tend to relocate your projects to different parts of the house. I use small squares. I use a small square one that kind of is broken and I keep the yarn ball in the basket and I feed the yarn work working yarn through it. I think that's pretty good. Oh, I got some more yarn hacks. But great one, Marwell. Look at this one. You ever, um, you can't find the center pool of your yarn, right? If you can't find it, that means you got to work from the outside of your uh, thing and it can get pretty like annoying. But all you have to do, what I did for this one, I put it on a hanger. I cut the far end off. And since this was heavy, I just taped it up. And now I have my own like spinning yarn thingy. Super simple and easy. Uh-oh. I have my project on it. Oh, darn it. I'm unraveling some of the work that I need for later in this project. But here we go. As you can see, it just rolls. Pretty awesome. Or you can put something like this. Let me find another on a dowel have a project just jam it through i got my dowel on and let's say you have a box or a laundry basket you can set this in between on those holes and it's able to roll right there easy peasy you don't need nothing complicated or a yarn bowl voila Okay, now we're going to get into the yarn hacks. Before we do, let's hop back into the comments and see what's going on. We have Cheryl Becker from Texas. Hey, how you doing? Oh, hey, hey, unapologet uh, unapologetically mocha. Let me scroll up in the chat. Your thing kind of moved. Well, to monetize a YouTube video, it has to be at least 10 minutes long. So two minutes idea has to be drawn out. Actually, no, to monetize a video, it doesn't have to be 10 minutes long. I don't know if that's a rule for if your YouTube um, channel is smaller, but to monetize, to be, be able to monetize your videos on YouTube, you need 4,000 or 4,000 watch time hours and 1,000 subscribers. I can uh, monetize a video at that's only one minute and 20 seconds long with no issue to it. So I don't like to draw anything out, even though more if you watch the video longer that's more beneficial to me i feel like as a youtuber when i go on youtube i want you to get to the point i actually have a series coming out next not this monday but the monday after next they're called no bs stitch tutorials let's say a stitch tutorial about the hound's tooth or any type of stitch it's going to be under five minutes long i can't stand when i see an easy stitch tutorial and it's 15 minutes long. I'm like, come on, honey, get to the point. So I'm coming out with a no BS stitch tutorial. So you can get to the point because sometimes you don't need like a beginner lesson. Sometimes you're a veteran crocheter and you just need a quick refresher. Like, come on. <laughs> All right. So ooh, we're going back into where was I? Yarn hacks. That was supposed to be moved up here yarn hacks if you want to right now you can pull out some yarn if you have some spare laying around make sure you have a hook these are some nifty little heart yarn hacks that we are going to work together the first one let me take this yarn this dowel out so i can crochet is the what we call it worsted weight yarn into bulky i think somebody told me the correct terminology for this navajo threading I'm not sure, but everybody, I was going to show you a video for it, but it's not necessary. I think I can show you right now. So what you do, you take your yarn and you make a regular slip knot. You got your slip knot. And like you're going to do a finger chain, pull your yarn. But we're going to pull our yarn really long. And guess what now? You have three strands of yarn to work with. Three strands of yarn is equivalent to super bulky yarn, just like that. And you would work this yarn just like you would super bulky yarn or three strands held together. So now you don't have to worry about three of your strands getting on knotted and tangled. You can just work with this. 
So now that you got that, let's start chaining. I'm going to chain a little bit faster. And once you get to the end, you're probably like, what do you do when you get to the very end where the loop stops? You just start to finger crochet one more time and you pull that loop real long and you're back to working with three strands of yarn. Bulky is super easy. And you know what? Sometimes not the super bulky yarn is super expensive, but well, I think it could be more expensive and you get less yarn. But when in the worst of weight yarn, you can get so many beautiful colors compared to what you can in bulky. So I can take, uh, I don't have any, all my variegated yarn is across the room, but I can take a red heart yarn, which have so many variegated colors and turn that into super bulky yarn. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Uh, my little creations for you crochet. Arkansas says Coke instead of pop or soda. Everything is Coke. <laughs> what kind of Coke you want? Orange? <laughs> I've never, you know what? I didn't know there was a third option. So it's Coke, soda, and pop. Everybody, what do you do? Are you a Coke, soda, or pop person? I am a pop person. <laughs> All right, let's see what our next hack is. The Russian join. We are going to go over and let's see my daughter's over in the corner are you just listening okay let's see i clicked the wrong button again forgive me guys scooch over we don't need to see mine we are going to look at the russian join this is like a seamless way of connecting your yarn we are looking at i knit with cat fur that's a nifty name <laughs> but let's check out her video on how to do the russian join Two ends of your yarn and cross them over each other so that they're interlocked like this. Take your yarn or tapestry needle and thread one of the ends through. And you want to leave a tail about an inch. I gotta be honest, I usually long. don't do this technique. It seems like it takes a while, <laughs> but it is a seamless look. And now you're going to thread the tail into the yarn itself. So just take your needle and go right into the center of your strand of yarn. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so you can see. Okay, I think we get that. Let's see. So just She's still threatening that. She's, strand. she's still threatening it. Okay. Oh, she's still getting that. <laughs> pull your tail. Okay. This is why I don't do this one too it often, but it is seamless, though. To straighten it out. I'm not that, like, picky. Look at that. I would never be you able to find any, any of that. Sticking out. You can just snip it off. Oh, my. Oh. Somebody donated. Oh my goodness. See, I'm not looking at the screen. I got to go back to the main screen. Who was that? <laughs> my daughter said, well, it's Lori Murphy. Hey, Lori, how you doing? Thanks for these hacks. You know what? Wasn't it your recommendation for the hacks? <laughs> but thank you so much for, oh, here's my son. He's happy. Come on in. Look at the bubbles. Say thank you, Lori. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> got to pop all the bubbles <laughs> everybody raise your cups to lori cheers mm. i'm sorry buddy i got to turn off the bubbles is that okay okay thank you so much i appreciate it let's see okay we're gonna hop back over into the russian join what do you guys think about it i'll when i click over to scene i actually can't see what you're um typing and talking about so let me know. I'll get back to seeing what you guys think of the Russian join. How do I get back to me? There it is. Is it playing? There it is. And cross them over each other so that they're interlocked like this. Oh, we already seen that. No. Uh -uh. There we go. We've seen that. And she's probably going to do the same thing with the other side. 
Yeah, okay, she's doing the exact same okay, thing with the opposite needle. side. Pull your needle through with your tail. Okay, let's see, pull them. I want to see what they both look like. Snip off any excess. Let's see what they look like. And there you go. Look how seamless that is. I definitely need to uh, do that one more often. But I just get so lazy. Look, it took her like three minutes. I don't got time for that all the time. But hey, pull back to my face. Here we go. Okay, I got it going. But once again, thank you so much, Lori. Lori's been with us. Well, actually, I've known Lori for a while, but she's been on these live chats since the beginning. I just started doing live chats in December. But thank you for always coming back. Coming back, I appreciate it so much. December. Oh, my daughter's saying that was doing more live chat. I did two the beginning of 2019. Okay, yeah, and then my computer you, broke and I couldn't do lives anymore. I when I called you at the end of last year during one, I remember. Yeah, you did call me. My daughter called me in the middle of a live. I'm like, hey, baby doll, I'm on the live right now. <laughs> okay, let's see what was going on in the chat. Dragon um, of the word. Russian joint is great for um, Amagamer. <clears throat> okay. Amagurumi. I said it. I didn't need any help this time. Amagurumi is thank you very much. If this is your first first time here, every single week, this word comes up, Amagurumi, and I can never say it. And somebody's always nice enough to phonet phonetically type it out for me, but I think I'm slowly getting it. All right. Denise says, too fussy for me. It is a little bit fussy. I like the magic knot, but it scares me. Will it wash out? No, oh, I actually, I probably should have put that one in my uh, tips, but I didn't know the name of it. It must be the magic knot. Okay, guys, maybe we can work the magic knot together. Let me take this out. I think we're thinking alike when we're doing the magic knot. I need some yarn. You have tons. I know I have tons. <laughs> okay. To, okay, to do the um, the magic knot, which I think is what she's talking about. Mm. You take one of your strands. Let's make a knot out of it. Let's take my hook down. See, I'm going to do it differently when I'm working, but this is the best way to show you. And I make a knot. You see that knot? And I'm going to slip this blue one through it, the one I'm going to change colors with. And now that green one is tied on to the uh, blue one. I'm going to do the same with the blue. I'm going to make a little fake knot. Well, real knot. You see? And I'm going to stick this green one through. And tighten the knot. And the trick is, pull these two taut like that. And now... I don't have any type of scissors. Jay, do you have any scissors? Yeah. Can you be quick? What you do, you cut these two strands and somehow, some way, this knot is supposed to be impenetrable and cannot break. Got the wrong foundation. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you, Jada. I'm glad you, I'm so glad you mentioned that one. This knot is supposed to be... Oh. <gasps> I yanked super hard. Ah, guys, I think it's time for a refill. My cup is getting a little bit thin. This one before. It's, it's getting kind of, come on, fill up. Shake it. Oh, come on, just a couple more. Just a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> How to soften your yarn. What you can do to soften your yarn, you can put it into a nylon uh, stocking and stick it in the washer and wash it. I always have to soften my yarn. Let's say I'm thrifting for yarn and I find some beautiful quality yarn from 1975 and you know that is all type of rough. So you need a way to soften it. Stick it in a nylon bag and stick it in the washing machine and soften it up. 
but I found something pretty awesome. This is one of my Dollar Tree finds. This is going to go in one of my crochet reviews. I got to be very gentle with the bag on how I take it out because I still need to take a picture for a future uh, YouTube video thumbnail. But look at this. This cost a dollar from my local Dollar Tree. Look at this little bag. It looks like it would fit a skein of yarn perfectly. Let's say I need a skein of yarn softened. I'm sticking to the bag, so if you're wondering what I'm doing, let's see. I haven't tried it yet, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Look at that. I got this from the Dollar Tree. This will be perfect for um, softening any type of yarn. So make sure you check out their... Uh, I didn't link it below. I should have. So make sure uh, you can go to DollarTree.com and you can have whatever shipped to your local store or delivered to you. Get one of these. They're cute. Or pantyhose, whatever you have. That will work fine. All right. Next, we are going to look at yarn wrapping. Okay, back to that on the side of the screen. And remember, when this is up, I can't see what's going on. Actually, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to pull it up on my phone so I can see the chat. Okay. Yarn wrapping. Oh, this is one of my favorite crochet YouTubers, Jada and Stitches. There is something about Jada and Stitches' laugh. It's like so infectious. But definitely love her. She's one of my people I inspire to be. Not be like, because she, she's original. But... I would, that's my end goal. I hope I have as many viewers as she has one day. But let's check out what she says. How to wind uh, your ball of yarn by hand. No extra that's gadgets. Fine. If you can't, well, then it's going to have to roll around the other way. So I'm going to use my bowl again because I feel that that's the best place to hold my yarn while I'm going to unravel it and turn it back into a ball. And it can stay there for the entire time that I'm working. And this is how I roll my balls. So I grab a string. Hold it between my thumb and forefinger, just like that, and I wrap it around the ends of my fingers, uh, maybe 20 times, 30 times. Basically what you want to do is you want to get a nice, thick roll going, and don't do it too tightly. You don't oh, want your fingers so to great. end up now I can see the comments together. while we're watching so try at the same time. try to keep your fingers somewhat spaced apart while you're doing this, and keep your thumb in there, because that also gives hey, you a Gracie, little extra Jada space. Hey, Gracie, was the first crochet channel I followed. Between my thumb I think and me finger. too. It's not just around the ends of my fingers. So there we go. That's a nice sort of start. Take that, and you just pull it off your hand, just like that. And then you sort of squish it shut, and you hold Can't it in the middle. Knits. I and learned a lot from Jada when I learned how to string, crochet. Start wrapping it around the middle. Now, you can keep your thumb in there. And there's a good reason to keep a finger or a digit in the middle of She's that very wrap. Detailed with her instructions. It's so that it I doesn't like that. wrap too tightly. Our tendency when we're rolling things is to wrap really tightly, to go really fast. And if you keep a digit in there, you can go as fast as you like, which immediately makes it tighter. But once you've finished, you can just slip your digit out. <laughs> Denise says, I've and actually watched this nice video from Jade and Stitches. And once you've wrapped <laughs> that a few times, and it's also nice and thick, you've got a nice sort of central bit going around the middle. You're going to spin it <laughs> Trisha, on a 45 this is degree how angle I ball. and wrap I know, that sounded more from gangster than one what you corner typed. round back <laughs> to the other corner. And you see I'm still keeping a digit in there because that keeps it nice and loose. So I'm going to do this 45 degree angle for, oh, I don't know, 20 Whisper rotations, SPI, maybe 30. You no, are on her numbers enough. for one of good. her live streams, then I'm going to turn What's it that mean? I'm not one of her numbers? And do What's the that other mean? 45 degree hmm. angle. And I'm going to keep a few digits there, keep the thumb in place. Drag another and just word. Wrap Put a paper towel on an electric mixer. And oh, I do that. I've heard course. that one too. And just that is the ooh, basic start videos. of rolling the ball. And now you can see what happened is you've got your middle start, sort of squishing out the sides there. Oh, you've got the middle. I never that do this the right on way. top of that. And now you've locked the middle into place by doing two separate rotations on the 45 I don't mean to watch this always do I just like her from here you can go back to the middle and then twist and then twist and then twist and keep kind of moving it bus happens now this is up on top on your yarn but you guys your basically yarn is get caught it on something 
Or you want to see the full enough, details of it? Her link weight. is down below. Absolutely love Jada and Stitches. Let's see what is else. All right. Hmm. Oh, see, I shouldn't have brought it back to me. I'm now I'm going to go into changing colors. Uh, changing colors is absolutely simple. Maybe I can just show you with just me and not use the video. Where did my crochet hook go? I'm going to use this one. I have a thousand crochet hooks laying around. This one I bought from my friend. Her name is Crochet by Carol Ann's daughter. You can find her on Instagram. She made these herself. Look at she gave me a little mermaid crochet hook and my favorite Susan Bates. But we're going I'm going to show you how to change colors. We're going to work with a double crochet, but this can work in any stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, treble crochet. As we're going to be working a double crochet. We're going to double crochet as normal. Let me let me step you through like you're a beginner. Yarn over, going through the um, next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull three two loops on your hook you'll have two loops stuck on your hook drop it I'm sorry I gotta find my blue yarn now I had it somewhere down here um there it is <laughs> now that you have your two loops on your hook remember you're dropping that working yarn and you're picking up the new color and wrap it around your hook and pull through the last two loops on your hook and your color is changed simple as that and you're just going to crochet over the top of those ends oh this is a horrible transition there we go that's good and you just keep working i didn't change the colors my bad i picked up the wrong thing i want to show you one more time i was being a bad teacher trying to get this perfect and i didn't do it right let's try one more time forgive me i'm live on my videos i'm usually like cut edit you never know I made a mistake that's what's wrong with YouTube videos you watch them like how are these people doing this absolutely perfect they're not we have editing power I edit out every single mistake so let's start that double crochet and end with them last two stitches on we got those last two stitches on you're dropping that working yarn and you're picking up the new blue yarn and pull through now continue working with the blue yarn while crocheting over your ends. Now I got it this time. You should make a blooper video. My daughter says I should make a blooper video. I should, but I don't think I, I say a lot of bad words on my bloopers. <laughs> I don't know if a lot of you guys would like to see me say a lot of bad words, but that is how you change your colors seamlessly. By just leaving those last two stitches on a hook in a double crochet, or when you're doing a single crochet, you yarn over when you have two stitches on your hook, you pick up the new color and pull through. A half double crochet is when you have three stitches left on your hook, and then you add the new yarn and pull through. Okay, J-Hook Crochet and More. She talks and moves slow. I don't know. I must have missed a uh, question before that. All right, where are we at? Doo -doo 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 -doo. Crazy Turtle. Where am I at in the chat? I think I'm too far behind. Let me scroll. There we are. I was. <laughs> J-Hook Crochet says, thank God for editing software. I know, right? Monique, dragon of the word, that makes sense. I was using the doorknob, but it's still a mess. Oh, I wonder what you were talking about. I wish I need to scroll up and see what that was before. Fun yards, blooper videos are mad funny. I get so mad. I, I try to be good when I'm live. You know, I use all my good substitute bad words. Shoney Hunt, Hunt. My daughter says I use substitute bass words when I crochet too. My favorite is sugar honey iced tea, uh, sugar biscuit, bananas. I think those are all my favorite ones. Hmm. Sweetum says we say soft drinks instead of Coke or pop. Soft drinks. I think you are in the minority for that one. <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah, my daughter said that's like the government issued name soft drinks if i was going to eat get anything generic it would probably say soft drink or something like that or something weird just soft drink but yeah i've learned today jada that people drink pop soda coke and soft drinks <laughs> I say pop. 
My, of course, you're, you got Pittsburghese. So, okay, now where are we at? I don't want to get lost and sidetracked. So we did the color change. Now, let's see where we are. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Wrong side, special stitches. Let me take a little breather. J hook crochet sugar biscuits. Yeah, I, I think I call my baby sugar biscuits too. If I use that as a bad word, am I calling my children a bad word? No, I call you guys sugar honey. What do I call you? Sugar yeah, I do call my ki kids sugar biscuits. Number one and number two. Yeah, sugar biscuits number one and number two. I know I shouldn't, but it creates wonderful children. They're always in competition for who's number one. It varies from day to day who's number one and who's number two. Denise, fizzy drinks in the UK. Oh, wow. Okay. That is a never, see, now we're outside of the US. Fizzy drinks. That I've never heard of that one. Tina says, she says soda pop. She combines them both. Where are you from, Tina? I love that. <laughs> Mary Ford, just drink wine. That'll fix it. Okay. Let's go into the uh, specialty stitches. The first one comes from our own moderator, Aquarian Queen. Let me see if I can get my yarn back. She says, an oldie but goodie, the magic ring. Love the magic ring. A lot, most of my videos start with the magic ring and unknowingly, I don't realize a lot of people do not know it. The alternative to a magic ring can be chain five, slip stitch into the first hook, I mean, first chain to form a ring, but the magic ring, Okay, guys, if you have your yarn with you, pull it out. I hope I can teach this officially one-on-one -on -one live because, you know, there's no editing. So what do I do? I take my yarn, my two fingers, and I wrap. See, we've got it wrapped. I don't know. It's weird because you're not facing the right. Can I, can I turn? Can I? Uh, uh. Uh, nope, I don't know if I can. There we go. I don't know if I can do it. I should probably Google the magic ring because I don't know if I can say it. Okay, we're just going to try. Wrap it. I got it wrapped around my finger in a circle. And I just pick up the new yarn. Does that make sense? I'll try again. I might have to bring up the video because it's hard to show you live from a weird angle. Because when I film my YouTube videos, my camera's above and it shows everything down below. So, we're going to wrap. <laughs> stick your hook through your fingers and pick up that working yarn pick it up pick it up and there we have our circle pull your fingers out and I just work from this circle right here I chain one go with my double crochet and just keep working back into that circle again I think I'm probably going to have to get a YouTube video if you guys can't see exactly what I'm doing I didn't link anyone down below because I thought I can show you live, but it's tougher than I thought. Yes, Miss Jada? Nothing. Come here. This is my teenage daughter, Miss Jada. Remember the girl um, last week I was talking about said has such beautiful makeup. I wish my eyes. I had to pass like four live streams. I talked about I know. But every some people are new. I wish that she can you gotta make my eyes look like that. See, I can just do eyeliner. Put your eyeball in the camera so they can see that. Look at that. Look at look at that. That is just <laughs> uh, poke dirt. How did she got it all faded perfectly? She's so talented with makeup. My makeup is my glasses. I love wearing glasses. Different glasses can make my face look different. Glasses to me is like wearing a concealer. It covers the bags on my eyes. Denise says she loves the magic ring. Whisper SDI. I've never used a magic ring. Chain two and crochet into the first chain and you can pull it tight. And it's just like a magic ring. You know what, guys? I can show. Thank you so much for saying that much, um, Whisper. That is probably so much easier. Everybody, get your hook. Chain two. And I can show you that. You can see. One, two. You have two chains on your hook. That first chain is your circle. So let's put three double crochets in that first chain. One, two, and three. Whoa. 
and three. I can hear my tutorial voice coming back into play. But like I like Ashley, I like yours better, Whisper. Look at that. And I can continue placing 20 in there if I wanted to. My big fingers in a way. See this gap right here? That is the circle she was talking about. That is a better tip. See, we're going to have, like I said, I think I plant 30 tips, but this is 30 plus crochet tips and we're an hour in. Man, we still got more to go. So next we are going to look at the, let's see, invisible DC, um, DC decrease. I'm going to take you down to a, another crochet YouTuber. Let's see. There it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't, I'm doing, here we go. Invisible DC. We're going to work this together. To make the invisible decrease, start a double crochet. Okay. I'm first time working through it too. There. And insert the hook into the next stitch. Oh, usually you yarn make over again. There. Now yarn over and pull through three of these. And yarn over and oh. through two. So that will show very little. Okay, for me, that one wasn't like the... It's pretty cool tip. Let's see, pull my mug back up. All right, what she did, I'm going to show you what a regular double crochet decrease looks like. You yarn over, go through the first, next stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook. Next, I'll yarn over. She didn't yarn over. Next, I'll yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over again, and pull through two. Yarn over again, and pull through the remainder. Know what? Hers looks way better. So yes, don't yarn over. I definitely like hers better. Awesome tip. Hers is down in the description box below. And oh, let me move my chair over if you're just getting here. If you enjoyed all these tips and these live streams that I have going every single Saturday, you can help support my channel through Super Chat. There's a little dollar sign down at the, uh, if you're on laptop, on this side of your screen in the chat box or down below if you're on your mobile. When you donate through that, it helps me continue to make crochet videos and tutorials and live streams like this every single week and if you do i have a little i don't know what do you call these celebratory machines that go off when somebody donates for 4.99 and down you have the disco ball for 9.99 and down you have the bubbles that go off including the disco ball for ten dollars and up you get the bubble the balloons the bubbles and the disco balls so if you would like to donate i would definitely appreciate it oh uh oh, we got a cheers from Deanna. Every time somebody says cheers, I have to take a sip of my drink if you're just getting here. Not coffee, not tea, definitely wine. Hmm. Let's see. Fun yarns. Same, the new stitch ends up looking bigger or what a gap for me when I decrease. Decrease. Yeah. Kim's crochet says, love the invisible decrease. I use it faithfully, especially in my amagurumi. Girl, I'm getting it. <laughs> Aquarian queen, stunning. My little creation says, yes, Kim's crochet and knit invisible decrease is great. All right, we get that. Now, where are we at? This one I've never done. We're going to be doing it together. I've seen this. The first time I actually seen it was done by Mom of 12. But since then, I've seen it done over and over and over again. It's called double crochet two stitches at the same time. I have not done it yet. So if you guys got your crochet and stuff ready, we're going to be doing these together. So let me pull out my frog, whatever I have right here. So we're going to double crochet two rows together. Let's see if it actually works. Okay. Where are we at? Uh oh, wine ball, change colors, foundation. Uh oh. Here it is. Ooh, doo -doo -doo. 
So you want to begin by creating your slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer and you want to do your chain as wide as your project needs to be. So for this you're going to yarn over and pull through, yarn Wait. over, pull through, Wait. yarn over, Wait. pull through. How many are you chaining? I thought, let me start again. I wasn't following instructions this in whichever method you prefer and you want to do your chain as wide as your project needs to be so for this you're going to yarn over and pull through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through you will continue that until the chain is as wide oh. as your project wants I'm not to making be. this so wide. you're making a scarf a blanket One, two, three, four, five, um six, seven, you just want eight, to nine, make I it did that 10. width so go ahead pause the video chain your width and meet me back in just a moment so I have now done um, 15 chains as my sample piece and whatever size you have done we want to add an additional six so yarn three, over, pull through, three, that's one, four, two, six. three, four, five, and six. So this is our additional six to help us create this pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a treble crochet, okay. which is a UK term. In the US, this is oh, known as double crochet. Double crochet. Thanks, I'm going Bella. to work into the third chain from the hook. So not Ooh. the one that's on the hook. This is one two so we're working into the third so we're going to go ahead and yarn over and insert our hook into Bella that stitch is talented, but and then yarn a over from without my pulling through we're going to skip the next two stitches one and two. Oh, see she went too slow i skipped ahead that's why you should pay attention i messed up so i'm going to start go back to i already chained those six i have to go back again i should pay attention from the hook so not the one that's on the hook this is one two so we're working into the third so we're going to go ahead and yarn over and insert our hook into that stitch and then yarn over without pulling through we're going to skip the next two stitches one and two and work into the third chain from um, the last stitch so inserts and then we're going to yarn over and pull through so we now have five loops on the hook. Oh, no, We're going I don't... to yarn over and pull. What? One, two, three, four. I guess I do got five. This looks crazy. Yarn over and pull, pull through. through the first two loops. We'll have four loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. We'll have three loops on the hook. We have now just created that first treble crochet. Do it. Is anybody else following And then yarn over, and pull through. Okay, I'm going to try again. I'm going to get this. I've never done it before. I've seen so many people do it. So far, I'd rather just do two double crochets. Be so whether you're making a scarf, a blanket, um, you just want to make it that width. So go ahead, pause the video, chain your width, and meet me back in just a moment. Mm, I'm gonna get this. So I have now done um, 15 chains as my sample piece, and whatever size you have done, we want to add an additional six. So yarn over, pull through, that's one, two, three, four five and six so this is our additional six to help us create this pattern so what we're going to do is we're going to do a treble crochet which is a uk term okay. in the us this is known as double crochet and we're going to work into the third chain from the hook so not the one that's on the hook this is one two so we're working one, two, into the third so we're going to go ahead and yarn over and insert our hook into that stitch and then yarn over without pulling through. We're going to skip the next two stitches, one and two, and work into the third chain from um, the last stitch. So inserts and then we're going to yarn over and pull through. So we now have five loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops. We'll have four loops on the hook. Okay. Yarn over, pull through two loops. We'll have three loops on the okay. hook. We've now just created that first treble crochet. 
and then yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook, two loops left, and then yarn over, pull through those last two loops on the hook. Oh, so we've just created that those was first two treble crochets, and then these can class as the turn in chain. So as we look at Commercial. The second type of funnel, which is um, the webinar funnel. Okay, now a webinar funnel is typically um, I'm selling a more expensive product. Like I said, somewhere from three hundred dollars up to a couple thousand dollars. Okay, <laughs> J-Hook crochets. The way that a, a webinar funnel ahead. works is somebody comes and it's more like J-Hook crochet says you need to make a video called Crocheter Watching Crochet T Tutorials and try to follow along. Your reaction to the videos would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, because I'm 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 struggling these stitches you may notice that we have um, two posts which are going diagonally across yeah. and this is separating those two stitches okay, I see that. so as we look at those two posts we have a slightly longer one and a shorter one and we're going to be working into that shorter one now so we're going to start off by doing our treble crochet so that's yarn over and then we're going to go into that diagonal post so remember we're not going into that first longer one, we're going into the shorter one. So yarn over, do not pull through, and then we're going to find the next chain along. Go into that chain, yarn over and pull through. We'll have five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over, pull through the next two loops. You've just made another treble crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so in I total, get it. we're pulling through two okay, stitches. Okay, I'm ready to cut this one more times. row. I think I get this. So again, we I have think we need some more this wine. longer diagonal post we and do. a shorter diagonal post. We're going to work into I that think shorter I got this. one again. Okay, I got yarn it. Yarn over behind that shorter post. I got post. it. Okay. Yarn over. Let me move faster. Through, find the next nope, chain. Insert. Yarn over pull through you'll have five loops on the hook yarn over pull through two loops on the hook you'll have four on the hook got it. yarn over pull through two okay you'll have three. i got this now yarn over pull through two you'll have two and then yarn over pull through Took those final second. two so this is what you're going to do all the way along the chain so go ahead pause the video Ooh, if you need to and Lord don't forget you can Jesus. actually slow down <laughs> was this a hack I, I got two rows I got it it's yarn over go through the weird stitch yarn over but don't go into the next stitch I, I figured it out but I'd rather just double crochet two rows than doing it it looks cool it's a cool trick maybe at, at, it was a lot it was a real lot when i crochet i like to relax and not think and the stitches that i learned at the age of seven is grained into my nugget this isn't for me nothing against bella coco excellent crochet youtuber i definitely recommend her she has like half a million subscribers go ahead subscribe she's awesome but the stitch itself, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Sabrina said, hey, Sabrina, welcome back. Um, what are we doing here on this? What is this video teaching? You're supposed to learn how to do two double crochet, not two rows of double crochet at the same time. This is what I got. Yes, I got two rows of double crochet. But if I was double crocheting, I would have been done with two rows already. By the time I did this, it's it's a little convoluted. <laughs> it's doable. I just don't recommend it. <laughs> Whisper says, you lost me right quick. I lost myself. Fun Yarn says, I'd rather do two rows separately. Yeah, me too. Denise says, I'm with you, Alicia. Relax and just do two rows. That's what crochet is all about. But hey, we looked at it. We tried it. And do we like it? Some might, it's just not my thing. Bobby says, Bobby um says, she says, I'm an old school crocheter. Same. All right. So 
<gasps> oh, here's a good one. Stopping the chain from twisting. This is a um oldie but goodie. That's not the yarn I want. I got yarn laying around everywhere. And look, we have about um, five more tips left. If you guys have any questions, save them for the end. Make sure you think of them now, because when I get to the end, I don't want this going too long. All right. And for those watching this on a replay, just watch. This is a long live stream. Just watch the first hour and a half. I'll probably have all the crochet tips. So what were we looking at? Stopping the crochet uh, chain from twisting. So we're going to start by making a slip knot. And let's chain five. I need a better. I can't use that one. Let's use this one. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. To stop your chain from twisting, you remove your hook. Place it into the very first chain. And place it back in your working loop. Just like that. And continue to chain just through this first loop. This one's going to be unworked back here. And just chain. And your uh, beginning chain will never twist. Uh oh, I got too happy with my crochet. Here we go. All right, so now since I'm going to be working into the round, I got that much of a chain. I'm going to yarn over and pull through both of them. And look, my chain is not twisted. I'll show you one more time, but quicker, so you don't have to be like, oh, Alicia, don't show me again. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Pull that loop long. Take your hook out. Stick it into the very first chain. Put your loop back on your hook. And chain as normal. This is one of my favorite ones, because I'm always twisting my chain all the time. And once your chain is long enough and you're ready to slip this to join, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. Perfectly untwisted chain. Boop, 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 boop. Ooh. I'm dropping stuff over here. <laughs> okay, where are we at? Hey, beautiful daughter. Oh, and this is just a simple one. Dropping everything. Let's say you're finishing a crochet project such as, imagine this being a big, huge blanket. And you want to, oh, oh, this is all messed up. Give me a second, guys. Remember, I can't edit anything right now. <laughs> all right. And this piece, this rut is the end of your huge blanket or you're almost at the end. Well, you are at the end. You want to finish off. You could just, this is your working long, it's still active. Pull this out and finish. No, just add, most people already do this intuitively. Do another chain and then pull. That extra chain like secures your work. That tip, simple, easy, and quick. All right, here we go. My next one to crochet straight edges every time. I don't have a double crochet row worked out. So I'm just going to show you the uh, video. Before I do, let me check the comments to see what's going on. Sonia says, just got here. What are we talking about? Uh, I, I missed you. Let's see. What are we? Sonia says, uh, just got here. What are we talking about? And wanted to say hello and love your videos. Thank you so much. Oh, we got another donation and my things did not go off. I'm so mad. Hold on. Do, do, do. We're going to make it go off for you on my little creations. We got the balloons. And, oh, you get them all. I'm just pressing buttons. Thank you so much, my little creations. I appreciate you. Now I'm split. Here comes the little one. He hears the balloon. Come on in. <laughs> Before the smiley face one pops. <laughs> you can pop him. <laughs> this is exciting. He comes running from his room. He hears it like going off. But thank you so much, my little creations. Everybody, raise your cups and cheers. Mm. 
Mary Ford just saw an email from Michaels. Oh, big yarn sale today. How big is it? It's like, is it worth it? I love when stuff goes about for a dollar. So everybody, check out Michaels. Thanks for the tip. Oh, and Bobby says, wait, Bobby's and a dragon of the word. Uh, Deanna says, yay, donation. Cheers. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Reggie says, cheers too. From all the bubbles you can't see, my paper is like soaking wet from my notes that I'm following along too. Okay, Aquarian Queen and Sheila says, cheers. Okay, Carrie Emery, is it possible to keep my stitch count without counting? No, <laughs> you can use stitch markers. Remember, you can use anything for stitch markers, but I'm actually going to, I don't know. Here's a stitch marker right here. If you uh, are doing an Afghan that has 300 rows, count 50 stitches, stick a stitch, whoop, stitch a stitch marker in it every 50 stitches. That is the only way, unfortunately. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, you're amazing, uh, foundation, devil crook. You're a hit. I think that's the very next. I didn't put that on there. <gasps> we, oh, I skipped over foundation, devil crochet. Thank you. You're amazing. 24 seven. It's wow. Yeah, you are amazing. 24 seven. I really did skip over top of that one, but okay, let's go to that one real quick. Where am I? We're going to work this together. I've done this before, but let me get my yarn ready. Everybody get their yarn ready. Where's my crochet hook? We're going to go to a video and follow along to the video. Okay, got my yarn. Let's go to display capture. Scooch over. Where is it? Okay, it's the foundation single crochet. Slip not everybody. Next, chain two. This will count as your first single crochet. One, two. Insert your hook into the first chain you made. Go through the front loop and the little one on the back. Now yarn over and pull up a loop. Then one more loop. Then yarn over and go through both loops. Now you have two single crochets. I need a mantra to remember it. To make the next one, insert your hook into the bottom of the last stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, then do that once more. Then yarn over and pull through both loops. I messed up. I messed up so bad. Let me try again. Show me again. Show insert me again. your hook into the bottom of the last stitch. Okay. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Then one more loop. Oh, that's what I missed. Then yarn over and pull through both loops. Okay. Pull through one. Pull through two. Insert. Pull through one. Pull through two. Insert. Pull through one. Pull through two. Insert. See, guys, I need a mantra when I'm crocheting. I just can't see it. I have to hear words. So, insert through that um V. Pull through one. Pull through two. Insert through the V. Pull through one, pull through two. For all the foundation double crochets, foundation single crochets, foundation half double crochets, I've done them all. But every time I do them, I have to go to a YouTube video. For some reason, I can't get these to like commit to memory if my life depended on it. Are you anyway like the same? Just die. I love the foundation or any foundation, single crochet, double crochet, treble crochet, so much easier once you figure it out. Saves a step and makes the beginning row really nice. What that great point. What I love, I do love about the foundation stitches. 
let's say you're doing a crochet hat when you're doing from the um, brim up from the bottom up hat when you do a chain and follow with a single crochet that first chain can be tight but when you're doing a foundation chain look at that there is some give to it when you're working back into like a single chain stitch there's no give so this is great for working headbands waistbands anything like that it works great so definitely recommended oh my 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 things aren't working anymore lori thank you so much for the donation i'm so mad at my you get it too girl wait i'm pressing the buttons myself nothing's not working i'm mad you get it all so we all get the bubbles <laughs> he comes running they're not going off you know what technology i don't understand it but lori thank you so much everybody raise your glasses and can we get a cheers cheers hmm i missed two donations what i did i'm going back up wait 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 <gasps> cassie drury thank you so much she gave us three dot thank you i appreciate it so much and thank you for the tip you're awesome and who else did i miss <gasps> I think I get, did I get everybody? I'm sorry if I miss anybody's donation. I am so, 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 so sorry. And let me go back. Who's the one that told me I missed the donations? You are so awesome. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have seen this at all. Joanne, thank you. If I ever miss you guys, be like Joanne. Just let me know because if I'm in the other screen, I don't know what's going on. And I don't know why these aren't working. You want to know how these work if you guys can give me a second we only got one more tip left but we're still going to tip chat and if you have any questions about running your own crochet business or running a blog being a youtuber or you have your own crochet tips let me know but we're going to look at how i'm getting this to work and let's see if it's working so you might as well watch me as i fix it let's see the app that i'm using to run this is called if then then that if then then that so if somebody donates through Super Chat, then these um, smart plugs I have on go off. And let's see if they're connected. Check now. This that one's complete. I think everything is working. Do 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 do. -do. back oh nope all right that's enough of that i think we got it all fixed so close that out and the last thing we are going to look at is actually this right here it is crocheting straight edges every single time this is one of my favorite go-to's you ever create like an afghan if you're doing like double crochets you'll notice if you do a chain three or whatever you get that ugly spacey gap on each end up oh, oh actually let's see there's somebody else who gave this tip first i don't want to exclude anybody who gave this one oh and two rows at the same time i missed it one one second give me a second i don't want to miss anybody's tip d if you're here she's the one that gave me the tip for crocheting two rows at the same time okay and to stop chains from twisting we missed that that was from mrs miles i don't think i have you saved on here i'm so sorry ah uh, forgive me and who else j reggie that's who i forgot to share my favorite hack is the chain a beginning chain without letting it twist where you chain if you change like well i don't have to read all this but she basically describes exactly what we're talking about about not twisting the chain thank you so much reggie i'm sorry i forgot to put your comment up there it's kind of hard to keep track of all these i got them all perfectly in order Whew. Guys, give me a quick little break to fill up. Whew. While I'm filling up, if you ever want to donate through Chupa Chat, it's right there. Link. Bubbles go off. I hope it works this time. But I need another drink.
it's running low. You ever get to the end of your box, you have to like tilt it and give it a shake to get the rest of it out? Thank you guys for being patient with me. You're leaving? Yeah. Give me a kiss. Love you. Where are you going to? Uh, okay, be good. Get your license, get everything. Yeah. All right. Text me when you get there. Yeah. All right. You better remember. <laughs> Bye, baby doll. Bye. My daughter, she's driving off to Pittsburgh. I don't live, I always claim Pittsburgh, but I actually don't live in Pittsburgh. I'm from the suburbs, about um, 45 minutes south of Pittsburgh. So my daughter's going there to like a BTS meetup. Have you guys ever heard of K-pop? My daughter is obsessed with K-pop. It is Korean pop music. And her favorite group is this group called BTS. It's short for, I don't know what. But last year, she cried her tears out and she was a, until she was allowed to go to this concert. She's, I mean, she saved up all her money, but these tickets cost $637 for just her one seat. When she told me, Mom, can I please go to this concert? I'm like, she's like, the tickets might cost $200. I was like, them is, that's some expensive tickets. But after everything was put off, she's like, actually, mom, them tickets were $600. I'm like, that could have been money to the car that we bought her a car after graduation. I'm like, but she did pay part of her uh, graduation money towards the car. But that extra $600 could have went to some of her graduations. But she's like, mama, I'll never see BTS again. They're from Korea. They're never going to come to America again. And they're here. And guess what? They're coming again this March. And she tried to cry to me and say, Mom, can I drive to Jersey? We're from Pittsburgh. She's like, Mom, can I drive to Jersey to go see them in concert? I know she's over 18, but I had to pull my mom card since I pay her car insurance. I'm like, no, we live in the country. You cannot drive in Jersey traffic. Then she's like, okay, can I go to DC? I'm like, you cannot drive in DC traffic. You gotta be crazy. I'm like, listen, you cried your tears last year. You got to go why don't you just focus on driving around your state for a little bit? But that was that. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I always go off topic. Okay. So cheers for me for going off topic. Carolyn, uh, Carolyn says, easy way to do an edging that is single crochet. We'll show, will you show one, please? Oh, let me read that again. Easy way to do edging that is single crochet. I think what you're saying, what is difficult about single crochet, let's say you're doing an edging on a blanket that is made with double crochet. You should always edge your work in a single crochet. It just makes it look neater. In double crochets, you can fit two single crochets within a double crochet. When you do a single crochets, you can sit fit single. Ah. When you do single crochet back and forth rows, let's say you're working a blanket. For your edging, each row will be a single crochet makes sense for a half double crochet you have to do what they call single crochet around your work evenly because it's not exactly one single crochet per stitch you just have to make it work it's weird hmm oh fun yarns my daughter also loves bts i found that so crazy which I, I love that my daughter loves um, the non-typical music because back in our days, we just was able to listen to what music was on our local radio station. Now in 2020, you can listen to what's popular across the world. She's not boxed in in the one typical genre of music. Annie O, wine tip to empty wine box completely, inflate it by blowing up the dispenser tube. You'll get every last drop. Thank you. See, I didn't want to be uh, tacky. Usually when it gets to the very end, I just rip this open and pull out the bladder. And I'm like, eh. but that's not ladylike. So I'm going to do that. Once this is over, I'll probably have my wine box like that. Molly Henderson says, go Steelers. Oh, yay. There's Steeler fans everywhere. Let's see. <laughs> my little creation says she loves the yarn tip. Deanna, once a mom, always a mom. Yeah. Ooh, Christina says she would like to see a live stream on Borders. That's a good one. 
see i think if we do a live stream on borders it'll probably be like this one where i have to show you videos because most border and patterns aren't like ingrained in my head i have to go back and look what other how can i say it? look at the creation of it again let's see Oh, did I miss somebody? Aquarian Queen said, Luminera, Alicia spoke about her experience in creating different incomes, including um, your crochet. Okay, Luminera, I'm going to try to go back and see if I can find what you were talking about. I don't see it. I just seen Pittsburgh Steelers. Yay, Luminera. Here we go. What's the best? Oh, what's the best way to price crochet items? And by the way, I'm someone with autism. All right. Like uh, Aquarius Queen's Aquarian Queen said, if you go back, if you click on uh, the little circle, you'll see my uh, channel icon. My very last live stream talks about how to price your crochet items. I made a specific little chart to help you. There are three ways you can basically three ways that are accepted to base your crochet items. One way is the three times material method. Let's say you have a uh, a crochet project and a yarn cost five dollars times three would be fifteen dollars but i don't recommend that one because let's say you're doing a amigurumi pattern and you're only using one skein of yarn but the work takes hours because it's very labor intensive that's not the best way the second way is by hourly hourly can be okay but doesn't take into the factor of material the third method is called Hourly and uh, hourly plus material would be your wholesale price. Then times two would be your retail price. I suggest doing that one, but using those two numbers, your wholesale and your retail as a pricing range. It sounds confusing, but go back to that video. Look down in the description box. I wrote a blog all about it so you don't have to have to figure out how to do math and count your finger none of that i wrote a blog all about it let's see oh gg the crochet queen why do i have a, a yarn ring on my finger i didn't realize that i was just playing with it my daughter loves tokyo hotel a german group Ooh, I don't know. See, my daughter just left out. She knows so many type of different music groups. She's like making me more cultured. Annie, oh, first time I ever seen your podcast. Love it. And your kids are gorgeous. Thank you so much. I actually have pretty good kids. I got to be pretty thankful. From day one, my, like my daughter has never told me no a day in her life. I'm talking from terrible twos on. Never told me no. I mean... She's been so polite. She's a polite kid. She's had her way of saying no. Let's say, hey, it's your bedtime. Go to bed. Hey, mom, I know it's bedtime, but I sure would enjoy some time hanging with you. She would find different ways of saying no, but putting it in a way that was like, I, I couldn't refuse her. It's weird. But both of my kids are exactly that way. We all, me and my husband say my son gives us Jedi, Jedi mind tricks. He'll walk up the steps. We never say anything. Did you say I can stay up till 10? I'm like, did we say that? I don't remember that. Okay, you can stay up till 10, buddy. He does that all the time. <laughs> Robin says, hey, I've been watching you on YouTube and a few of your live streams. I really enjoy the, enjoy the haul videos and all the information I've learned from you. Your fan from Henderson, Kentucky. Hey, hi. Thanks for joining us here today. I absolutely love the review videos. I'm a little bit behind. I have this one review I'm supposed to do. I'm going to do. I bought the um, items. You ever have you ever been on Facebook and you seen like these ads? Like, hey, do you like this craft item? Try this. So I bought something from a Facebook ad. Oh, I'm getting off on topic. Let's get to this very last tip. All right, the last tip is crocheting straight edges every single time. This is called the standing crochet tip. And I think that one of the people that recommended this was Sandra Laughlin. My favorite is beginning chainless, single crochet, double crochet, and etc. All right, where am I? Oh, wrong button. <laughs> Move my butt over. I'm starting to feel a little bit tipsy now. I feel it. Okay. 
I'm setting you up for the video. We just made it to the very end of the row. And now we're going to do the standing double crochet stitch that gets you straight edges every single time. And we're going to turn our work. Typically, we would chain one, but not while doing a foundation turning chain. What we're going to do next, we're going to work one single crochet into this very first stitch right here. So place your single crochet. Okay, on a single crochet work, you'll notice you have two loops. This loop right here we'll call loop one, and this loop right here we'll call loop two. We're going to place a single crochet into loop one, because if you go into both loops, you'll just unwork your stitch. So we're going to single crochet into loop one. Single crochet. And that completes your foundation turning chain. Is now the height of a That's double it. crochet. If you want to complete a, a triple crochet, every time. you would just single crochet back into that first loop right here to complete a treble crochet. And now it's the height of a treble crochet. Okay, now I'm just going to show you how to work it back in. See, I like to keep my videos short. Two minutes and 54 seconds, no fluff. But, okay, let's make it to the end of this row. So this is what it looks like working back into that weird stitch. See, I already turned and work around, and here's that standing double crochet right here. And let's take a closer look at this so you can see what you're working into. As you can see, you'll see two V's. The first V was, remember, the very first single crochet you put on it, and the top V is the second single crochet that you stacked. That will be the stitch that you'll be working into. So... Complete your double crochet in that very last stitch. And that's it. And that is how your work has um, such perfect strength. I use a chain. Look at that. Well, ooh, I get this set up nice so you can still see. Scroll, 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 scroll. There we go. Commercial. So I, I, I shouldn't be mad because commercials, that's how I actually get paid. Seller, right? getting on stage, but I can't get paid through my that. own commercials because Google recognizes. The are perfectly aligned. There we go. See, this is what it looks like when you create a chain three for your um, turning chain. So your chain three would be considered your first double crochet, and then you would double crochet into the next stitch. And this is what it would look like. You see how it gets those, all those gappiness? So the next one is a chain two and double crochet into the same stitch. So as you can see right here is the chain two, and I double crochet into the same stitch. Some people, to alleviate this bump, just chain one, and it looks a lot better. But this is what it looks like. As you can see, each turn is bulkier on the outsides of each turn. So the foundation double crochet creates edges like these. Look at that. Super straight. Awesome tip. Let me get out of here. Ooh, okay, what's going on? Aquarian Queen, yes, BTS is K-pop. It's a genre of music. I'm glad you know about it. Deanna says, my daughter was always waiting, wanting a drink of water, or I need to go to the bathroom. She's now 51. Your daughter's 51. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. I'm going to scroll back a little bit. Hmm. Lazy Black. I guess we're talking about crochet pricing. Honestly, location matters also for pricing. In my area, no one would pay $200 for a blanket. I want to, yes, it is 2020. We're going to talk about pricing. So pretty much, um, I still, actually, I forgot. I got two more tips. It is, it's 2020. You don't have to worry about pricing in your location. Because you know what? You're more likely to find somebody that wants to buy with your online. Do not undersell yourself. Do not say nobody. Somebody will pay $200 for a blanket. Because listen, how long does it take to make a blanket? It can take you from anywhere. Where's my calculator? You can't see it, but I'm calculating right now. Where are you, calculator? Calculator on my computer. So... Uh, let's, how big is this Afghan? Let's say it's an Afghan that can take 50 hours. We'll, we'll make it better. 40 hours. 200. Um, I think 
think I did this right. Is it 200 divided by 40 or is it 40 divided by 200? I forget. Mean math. Okay, you end up making $5 an hour. That is under minimum wage. I was telling this to other people in my Facebook group. Crocheters are the only crafters that will fight for sweatshop raises. You won't see um, a seamstress fight. I can't get my, there we go. You won't see a seamstress fight for sweatshop raises. When I posted um, my chart for what pricing is, that was my most common upon post. Okay, actually, I'm going to show you guys all right now so you all can see also. Let's see, we're going to make this a little bit bigger because we don't have to do half screens anymore. Come on. There it is. Bananas, I can't stretch it. There. Do, do, do. We're going to go over to my blog. Little John's Yarns. Guys, make sure you check it out. I got that down in the description box below. I love saying that so much. Okay. How to price your crochet items. Here we go. This is the chart I posted. I didn't make these prices up. These prices are from uh, whale price options that were like, what would you call them? Like, uh... I wouldn't call them old wife's tales, but that's been going around the crochet community forever. The three times option, the hourly option, and the materials plus hourly. And if you want, that's for a wholesale. For retail, it's time two. So this chart is based off of uh, materials that are $5 an hour. I mean, $5. $5 materials. So we're just looking at a hat. That would be $15. If you go hourly, it will usually takes you around an hour to two hour to make a hat. So you can profit $24, I mean, 12 to $24. But your profit for materials uh, would be $7, seven to, I don't know. I can't do the math, <laughs> but it wouldn't be that much. It's not worth it. You're still making sweatshop wages, below minimum wages. I recommend using the option three, material plus hourly as a range say for a hat a wholesale range for a hat is $17 to 34 bucks in some areas yes nobody's going to pay uh 34 bucks for a hat i think 34 bucks for a hat is awesome for me i can do that i was charging 35 bucks for a hat but use this as a range what really comes into play is the bigger the item the bigger the discrepancy in the prices check out an afghan if you go by materials you're making, I forget, I think it was three bucks or two bucks an hour if you charge two twenty five or something like that. Is it? I don't think I did that. I think I did the math wrong for the other one when I was doing the description at five dollars an hour. But this is somewhere in the blog. I got it written correctly. But look, two twenty five all the way up to thirteen fifty. I know nobody's gonna pay thirteen fifty for an Afghan. But you know what? I think six seventy five is absolutely amazing. And if somebody tells you no, don't do it. Why would you want to give somebody fifty hours of your life? It's not worth it. Somebody else is going to pay you. You just have to find your target market. And to find your target market, you have to market yourself. Where am I? There's me. Hello, everybody. What have I been missing? Let me go back into the chat. Okay. Dieta, nobody will pay your time, which is sad. True. And if they don't, it's not worth it. Unfortunately, I always say crochet is a craft of the heart. It's what's been gifted to people for years my grandmother made blankets for anybody who was about to have a baby and she just gave it away it's and so my whole entire family i have 25 first cousins so when i started crocheting when my cousins were like oh you're selling because they missed what my grandma used to make because they love grandma they're like oh can you make me a blanket for my baby i'm like oh yes 90 dollars they're like 
what are you talking about? Why am I, I would never pay $90 for a blanket. I'm like, grandma gave it away for you for free. A baby blanket takes some time. I will not create anything for you for less than that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking huge. I'm talking about, you know, little baby blanket. At least $90 depending on the stitch. Because a blanket, you can't flat rate crochet because a blanket is not a blanket. What stitch are you using? Some stitches are more uh, labor intensive than others. Some um, crafts, like when you do ag amigurumi, is more labor intensive than making a simple crochet hat. I can blindly make that, but if you mess up a stitch on that, you're all worked up on amigurumi. Okay. Bobby says, no, they will not. Did I already read that one? Yeah, to learn. Time is money. Yes. Lacey Black. I tried on Etsy for over a year. Never sold why not one item. So I suppose I wasn't doing it right. I talked about this in the live stream before. Etsy is, you need to learn SEO, search engine optimization. But on Etsy, it's one of the hardest platforms to rank on. I make about depending on the season, 200 to 350 a month on Etsy. And let's say out of that, well, I should say, I should more go by views. Let's do views. I make about 2,500 views on Etsy every single month. And from those views, you know how many come directly from Etsy? About 200, 300. Of the 25, I forget the number I just said, the 2,500 views, only 300 come from Etsy. The rest is because I promote my work. Etsy does not promote anything. You cannot make Etsy your business. Etsy is a platform you do business on. Does that make sense? Etsy will not find you any money. Etsy's not there to give you money. You have to work at it. When I'm on Etsy, I post my items on Pinterest. I post my items on Facebook. I post my items everywhere. My patterns, even when I'm selling um, custom orders, you can find me everywhere. If I Google you and you are not taking up the first page of um, Google when I type in your name, you are not doing your right. You are not marketing yourself correctly. Is it work? Yes. It, this is for the strong only. <laughs> Sometimes I forget everybody's not built like me. To make money in this, you have to work extremely hard. You can make money in any other field, but think, this is yarn. You got to be a bad bee <laughs> to make money in yarn. So, hmm. Let's see. J-Hook Crochet. I don't do custom orders. I only sell things I already have done. I can't get myself to work on demand. You know what? That's fine. If, you know what? If that's what works for you and that's what makes you happy, do what you have to do, and luckily, uh, J-Hook, a.k.a. Reggie, you have a YouTube. I know you're still beginning in your YouTube. Just give it time. You are going to grow. You are going to get there. You give solid information, and you're person. you have a great personality. You just have to wait for that. For me, the way I grew, I started um, after I was done completely doing custom orders. I began... Uh, being more of a pattern maker. My pattern making skills before I started writing them down was on YouTube. I did, just like everybody, I started with zero. There was nobody watching me. I think my very first, my introductory video, I mean, I got 75,000 um, subscribers now, but my introductory video is like, hi, I'm Alicia, please subscribe. Nobody knows me, I have zero viewers. I just had to slowly work hard. After I made it that first year or two, of non-stop consistency, what you're doing, you'll grow. You're good. You'll get there. Oh, and, ah! You guys don't see, I just stepped on all of my crochet. Actually, you can see now. I just, I spilled all of my crochet hooks all over the floor. Mm. Bananas. Ugh. Oh, I forgot we still have two more uh, tips I forgot to talk about. Three more tips. They're just regular little ones. One is from, oh, I didn't write her name down. I, where is it at? I hope it's on one of my little click things where I can pull her up. Good to know. Yes, these are the last tips. The good to know tips. 
Here we go. This one is from Shelly. I'm not sure if this is a hack. However, I'm using the light up hooks. Here, maybe one. I purchased a bag of cheap yarn at a rummage sale off all off white made from DuPont. This stuff was made in the 80s. I like to make mock up squares when trying new stitches or patterns to get an idea of the way the stitches will look so I don't kink up my yarn. Good idea. Next tip was from Erin. My main thing is keeping a nail file in my crochet bag. I'm never sure when I may bang up a nail and get a hangnail or when the yarn catches on a piece of nail that I didn't know needed to be filed. This was an awesome tip. How many times have you just had that bad nail that keeps getting hooked on everything and you try to see I'm a nail picker. I don't have gorgeous, beautiful fingernails. You probably seen on all my instructional videos. I'm hoping you guys don't think, Ooh, her fingers are chewed up and just think about that's good quality crocheting because my fingers are chewed up. But when I get something, I, I start picking at it. But if I just had a fingernail file, in my stuff i wouldn't have any problems you know what i'm saying all right so the next my husband is home i hear him is that you my husband yeah. hey husband i love you okay let's see what else is going on in the good to know take that button off oh i think that there was another one this was from gloria jordan Oh, is that the cheesecake? Yeah, my husband brought me home some cheesecake. He knows my heart. He's the man of my dreams. Okay, the last one is from Gloria Jordan. I had it. No fudge biscuits. Okay, what she said, she uses, you know the little um things you can put, I don't knit. But I do have these little knitting caps from uh, buying crochet hook sets. What she does so her scissors won't poke through her wherever she's keeping her latest whip. She puts this on top of her scissors so they won't poke through her bag. Simple as that. Actually, I didn't know I can demonstrate this uh, example because I couldn't find these scissors anywhere. If I didn't kick over my uh, hooks, I would have never found it. But simple as that, I'm actually going to use this hack right now because I always take my crochet bag everywhere. Okay, let's see what's going on in the chat. Oh, Aquarian Queen, I must have missed somebody's uh, question. SEO search engine optimization. Girl, you must be on it. You must be here all the time. You know what I'm talking about. All right, <laughs> let me... um. Here we go. J-Hook Crochet. Oh, thank you, Alicia. That means a lot to me. Hmm. Virginia says, J-Hook Crochet and more. That's kind of how I feel. I love crocheting stuff, but I just don't know. I have the schedule to make custom orders. No, it, crochet business isn't for everybody. But if you want to crochet for, let's say, during the holiday season, I was able to, my very first year of crocheting, I didn't make a lot of money, but during custom orders, I was able to make enough money for me and my husband to go on our own vacation. I think we went to Puerto Rico that year. So you don't need to make a living. You can just make enough money to go on vacation to Puerto Rico like I did. <laughs> Bobby says, I don't give anyone uh, decreased discounts because you give one, then more come. Yes. I kind of brief, um, briefly talked about what Bobby said. Bobby said, don't give anybody get, get dip, discount drink because everybody will expect one. I'm not saying discounts are wrong, but if you do give somebody a discount, let's say I made a beautiful sweater for my coworker. I'm like, hey, coworker, I love you. This sweater's only going to cost you $150. But it's an intricate stitch and it could should cost 200 Do not, do not, you tell that customer, do not tell anybody I gave you this discount. If anybody asks you, customer, this costs $200, period. If you do give a discount, discount, let them know. Don't tell anybody. Tell them the retail price and not the wholesale price. Okay, where are we at? 
dragon of the word nail clippers are allowed on most airplanes while scissors are not and they cut yarn just as well yes <gasps> i don't know i did this on a review i don't know if i have it i hope i do it is made by clover it is a yarn pendant cutter or did i give this away on one of my giveaway i don't know but these are so awesome. I gave this like a five balls of yarn a review. It looks like something that can go on your necklace. It's a pendant, but yet it's a yarn cutter. No, I'm so excited about this. I have to, I burped, sorry, excuse me. I have to show you exactly what it is. There we go. And you can see my face at the same time. Hey, me. There we go. Amazon. How do you spell pendant? pendant yarn cutter here it is this is made by clover i recommend these i did a review on this what you do you just stick the yarn through one of these little grooves and it cuts instantly you can take them on a plane definitely recommend it i think the one that i have i gave away during one of my giveaways I think it's almost time for another giveaway. I think eventually, because I still got some craft gadgets that I haven't given away yet. Oh, and before we keep on chatting, think of some more questions that any of you might have. Remember, related to business, whatever, crafts, hacks, let me know now, put them in right now. But Super Chat, you can always help support my channel, help me grow, help me give you more information by donating through Super Chat. And when you do, I don't know, these bad boys should go off with a disco light, bubbles, and balloons. Let's see if they work. The last couple times they didn't work, which made me pretty upset. But I was able to press them through my phone to get them all working. So, fingers crossed. But help support the channel. I would appreciate it so much. Oh, and everybody, I'm looking right now at the viewers. 220 viewers consecutively right now. This is the most viewers I've ever had at one time ever thank you so much you know what i'm gonna give a cheers to me everybody whatever you're drinking home right now raise your cup can we have a cheers cheers hmm virginia says i have yarn taking over my living room and my bedroom husband is not amused husband oh he must be outside people think this on YouTube, you can only see a camera angle of what this hysteria is. I have a video of showing all my yarn hoard. I have so much yarn. This is not a legitimate craft room. This is my living room right here. It's taken over. I have, I'm have. i not a, a YouTube millionaire. I have a, a 1,100 square foot house. So my craft room is my living room right now this is everything i think he's okay with it i think he's okay with it because he is a chef he loves to cook i talk about it all the time but his kitchen our kitchen i don't cook his kitchen is a galley kitchen where for him to cook all he has to do is spin like this our kitchen is so far so small so therefore we turned our dining room into his extended kitchen so now my husband has his extended kitchen in a dining room and i have my extended um craft room in the living room so do we have a dining room or living room no we have big dreams <laughs> but we don't have those rooms this year because my craft room wasn't up here this year every christmas we have our own um we Christmas is our holiday. We have Christmas brunch. The family come over, but our house is so small. Okay, you got. Oh, we got some cheers. I was going to give you a tour of my house real quick. Cheers. We got cheers from Aquarian Queen, Jackie, Dieta, and uh, Margaret, Elizabeth, and Anna. Okay, all the cheers. Whew. So, it's a little messy right now. I try to keep my corner clean, but. We're already two hours in. I'm sure you guys are okay with me showing you some of my stuff. All right. So that is the dining room. Ah, I'm stepping on stuff. His kitchen. You can't see. It's super small. 
So we don't have enough space. <laughs> we just need so much more space. Okay. Robin says, I've been toying with the idea of starting my own podcast. Haven't decided what exactly. Thanks for all your great information. You know what? Some people are afraid to be on camera. Don't be afraid. But I'm amazed that I have uh, people who want to listen to me um, talk online or talk on YouTube. Just find a topic and speak your heart. You'll be amazed what people who want to listen to what you have to talk about. You might think there's nobody in the world that thinks like me. Actually, there are a lot of people in the world and you'll be amazed the people that want to listen to what you have to talk about. You just have to give it a try. But I do want to tell you before you start any of it, it's not about how great you are to succeed in any of this. Let it be succeeding in your own crochet business or YouTube or podcast or whatever you want to do. You have to learn the back end. That is the most important part. I tell people all the time, I am not the most talented crocheter in the whole entire world, but I am the most consistent. I am the one that studies my analytics. That's another thing. Study. If you're on Etsy, you want to know what's wrong with your Etsy. If you want to know what's wrong with your YouTube, look into your analytics. Your analytics will tell you everything. When I'm on my blog and I see people um, bounce off my page or bounce off my uh, YouTube video, I look at like what, what was I doing in my video at 2 minutes and 35 seconds to make them leave? What was I doing... Uh, why are, is my uh, Etsy listing listed so bad that people aren't staying and, you know, find out your analytics tell you everything. I know it looks confusing, but guess what? We have this cool new technology called YouTube. I graduated, graduated from YouTube University. I learned it all. I would say, because I began YouTube three years ago, that's when I made the technical loop into everything. So prior to three, four years ago, I didn't know how to do any of this. I didn't know how to build a web page. I didn't know how to code. I didn't know how to uh, work AdSense. And I didn't know any of this. But YouTube has taught me how to make an income doing exactly what I love. I have, I didn't list it below. But if you ever want to follow along to me and learn how to make um, your craft into your business, I give information about that. If you don't, I'm not the end all be all guru of this, but I'll give you information like my income report, which is on my blog, littlejohnyarns.com. Just click on the entrepreneur tab and you can see my monthly um, income report. So far, I only have December up. I still have to do uh, January. And next week, we are going to do our February income report. And I don't know, I was thinking about the topic probably being if those ones are, those who are um, trying to be crochet entrepreneurs, I want you guys to understand that January all the way through July are your sucky months. <laughs> These are the sucky months of the year where you don't make as much money. Your cash cow is from August until Christmas. That's where the money comes rolling in. I don't want you guys to feel bad if you are just now today. February, what's today? February 22nd or 23rd, whatever part of the country you're in. And you're trying to start your own crochet business today. And you're saying, I'm not getting any sales. What's going on? It's February. It's almost March. You are not in crochet season. Well, depending on part of the year, um... Right now it's winter here. I guess in a different hemisphere, winter will be in the opposite months. So wherever you are, winter is where your money is. Aquarian Queen, I live in some bedroom apartment in Manhattan, New York City. Nice to know. I guess somebody asked you a question. Oh, how big your place is. What does the yarn look like? Oh, husband, is that you? What do you think of all the yarn that I got? It's everywhere. It's everywhere? Do you, are, are you upset about the yarn being everywhere? Nah, it makes money. See, my husband said, no, it makes money. He's not mad about the yarn. My husband, that's a and good answer. Mad. You can't get mad if somebody making money off it. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. He said, you can't get mad when somebody's making money off it. Yes, these beautiful little treasures are money makers. 
the funny thing is these ones will probably sit there for years i have yarn sitting around for years that i have never used i'm just waiting on a project Shh. okay where are we at in the stream <laughs> aquarian queen says lol my room always looks crazy my room is so bad whenever i do live street live streams everything is like completely jacked up until i have to put it all together again but so that's that <laughs> All right, what else is going on? Did I miss anybody's comment? My cup is, I think by the time this cup is empty, we'll probably end up the live stream there. I love our live stream. I think our last week live stream ended up being like almost three hours because it cut off halfway through. Once upon a time, I never would imagine I was able to talk this much. I'm not a very verbose person. Most people know me as being extremely quiet. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, J-Hook, Crochet, and more. LOL, I'm scared to ask my husband that question. You know what? If you're scared, don't ask him. <laughs> uh, my Little Creations. Make plastic yarn and crochet yarn bag totes to store them. Ooh, you guys have not... You guys want to see my craft room? I forgot I made a video on it. So maybe we can uh, show you my craft room. Let's drag you out. Do, 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 do. After I show you this, we'll probably wrap it up soon. But my craft room is a mess. But I'm not going to show you, like, show you, show you. I'm going to show you the edited version. Let's see. Maybe I can put a yarn hoarding. Oh, I'm not there. There I am. <laughs> Traditional webinar, the first part of the presentation should take anywhere from five to ten. Welcome to Little John Sharns. I'm Alicia, and we're about to get into my yarn stash. But before we do, I'll call this my funky chunky yarn. This is the concept. corner where I film all my these videos. Yarns are much thicker. I guess a uh, number five or number six yarns. Oh. So I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. Nope, oh, I stopped that. Do with them yet? This is all right. Much here too is the to make it to a blanket. Now we're going to go across the corner. room. You probably can't see below. I got more craft stuff. Stuff that I'm going to uh, show you in my reviews and hauls are down here. So next I'm going to take you to the opposite side of my craft room. So now we are in the next section. So I have so section, much yarn. I have my Caron Simply Sauce. I absolutely love my Caron Simply Sauce. And also my cheaper Red Heart Super Saver yarn. Let's see if I can get it even further down. This section more yarn. is low. Are all of my novelty yarns. Yarns which I've probably had for years that I do not know what I'm going to do with. Where? Okay, I got my cones of yarn. And up here, we have our cones of yarn. I think that Mark 10 or Rubbermaid 10 full now of Now we're going to go yarn. into my baskets okay, I got of yarn. another box of <laughs> yarn. It's not, sorry, the video is not well as lit, not lit as well because I have my cameras facing the opposite direction. All right, so let's get into this big bin right here. Does anybody have a container like this? It's nuts. I got so much so crap in it. there's pieces of stuff I've never finished. There's scrap yarn. There's more. And then okay, I have I'm another box. Corner to show you my very last tub. Let me drop it down. So here. much yarn. All right. This tub is full of scrap yarn. Scrap yarn that I made in cakes so I can use them for later. Let's see. Get a better angle of this. Oh, my scrap yarn. There we go. Cake yarns for days. Cake. 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 All right. So that was that. When I'm crocheting, I actually try to come to... And I squeeze this all into my little space. I try. <laughs> all right. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Aquarian Queen said, that's right. Good husband. Deanna said, my mom had two rooms of yarn. Oh, Lord. 
<laughs> Deanna has hundreds of plastic shopping bags with started projects. Susan, um, in New York State, as of March 1st, we can't get plastic bags for groceries anymore. So now I have to hoard my plastic bags I already have. So no more plastic yarn for me. Aww. Everybody send your yarn out to Susan. It's funny. I... I, is, is anybody else like this for the states that you're still allowed plastic bags? I, Whenever I go grocery shopping, I cannot throw away plastic bags. I have this big, huge plastic bag full of plastic bags. I just can't seem to throw away. I just have a lot of them. I do. Okay, fun yarns. Wow, I see so many yarns here. I have so many saved patterns and not enough yarns. Neither do I. What I, if you've seen that very last box that I showed you, my scrap yarns that I like to go into first, that's the only um, thing of yarn I actually use. The rest are just all decorative. I just love to sit there and look at it. It makes me feel happy when I'm just next to yarn. It's so soft and cuddly and beautiful. It's weird. It's, <laughs> I, I can say this to you guys because you don't think I'm crazy, but to anybody else, the way I feel about yarn is just like, oh. <gasps> I did this one yarn. I bought oh great place to buy yarn. Type in DBNY in your Google search. It's called Discount Something Yarn, but DBNY.com. It's they have all type of discount yarns. You have to scroll down all the way to the bottom of the page, and you'll see this little pink box with a heart on it. And you can see the specific sale. Specific sale. They have yarn by the bag for a dollar. I'm talking about five skeins of yarn for a dollar. When you see all of these, like, well, this is messed up. These Dark Horse yarns, Dark Horse has been discontinued. But I bought five skeins of these for a dollar from there. I bought a total, the yarn came to $38. Once I put in shipping, the yarn came to let's say $60. The yarn came to $60 after shipping. I bought a hundred skeins of yarn. But you have to wait for a specific sale. You have to wait till the moon aligns and stars are right. Definitely a great place to shop on. That's what I want to do a live stream about. Where's the great place to get yarn at super dirt prices? Every once in a while, there's great sales at Lion Brand. Lion Brand will have a $1 sale. Or you can go to the uh, Dollar Tree website and get their yarn for Super Treat. Awesome. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Drag another word. Plastic bags work well with scooping cat box. Scooping the cat box. I bet it does. Um, my battery's getting ready to die. Bye, Dietta. I'm sorry your battery's dying. Everybody give her a cheers. Thank you for joining us. Don't worry, you're not missing that anything much. we have down to the last 10 minutes of our live stream anyhow. I'm just talking and chit-chatting, answering some questions. My little creations for you. Me too. And plastic, um... Bottle jugs. I make animals that have a water jug inside for money. Baby animals crochet. I've never seen that. It's pretty creative creative of you. <gasps> Luminera, I miss lion brand fettuccine. I, I, we, we, there he is. Lion brand fettuccine. What was it? Uh, about a year ago? You might still be able to find them at some Dollar Trees. Dollar Tree had a whole bunch of these lion brand fettuccines because it was discontinued. I just snagged them up. I have about 10 of these. I still don't, I've been sitting on them for the past two years. I haven't decided to make a pattern. I was thinking about slippers because I've seen other people make slippers with these. I think that would be a great idea. I have to think of my own pattern and make it unique. But now I'm just still sitting on it. Or maybe I can make like a rug. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, I might mess this up. Lorinda, 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 you can buy wine only on Sundays after 12 in Texas. You too? Why is that? That's weird. In Texas. Okay. Dieta, I miss Super Yarn Mart in California. I've never heard that. That must be like your own local yarn spot. I wish I had one of those. So if it if it looks like I'm holding this for a long time, it's because it's on trickle mode. 
let's see Antoinette come on drip 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 I can read it I found DK yarn on sale a couple weeks ago for um by four for a hundred gram balls for the equivalent of maybe a dollar let me finish reading that I also bought a hundred skeins and it came to 20 bucks I'm in Ireland <gasps> A hundred grams? Four? Four one hundred gram skeins of yarn? For Let me read that. A hundred of them? Oh my goodness. You got the deal of a lifetime. I wish I would have snagged that up. That is amazing. Oh, J-Hook Crochet says, I'm going to bed now. Half past ten here in Germany. And tomorrow is... Let me read this right. Car and is that an M or an N? Carmival, have a great day and thank you for all the great tips. Thank you so much for joining us, J Hook Reggie. I appreciate it. And hopefully, I'll see you again next week if you're not busy. If you are, it's okay. You don't have to come every single week. I appreciate you volunteering to moderate this group. Thank you. So, everybody, tell Reggie good night, aka J Hook Crochet. Virginia says, if anyone is interested in Hirschner's has Mills Ends. A pound for $2.99 and pack of three Mandela Mill ends for $5.99 right now. Can get coupon for $2.99 shipping also. Everybody check out Hershner's. Thank you for the chip tip, Virginia. Uh, Bobby, NVA, everything is closed on Sundays. Oh, man. All right, guys. I think I'm going to wrap up this live chat. I hope you enjoyed this one, and we're all going to gather again here. Oh, <gasps> DBNY yarn is shut down. What? Okay, we're not going to wrap this up. I'm going to look at this real quick. Oh, my goodness, Joanne. I'm so mad. It can't be shut down. Google. Sorry, I know I was about to um, get off, but DBNY, Cherry Hill. Come on, everybody, cross your fingers, cross your fingers. Oh, <gasps> no. This was my favorite website. Okay, guys, I'm so sorry. This was like my number one website to get cheap, affordable yarn. That is so horrible. Uh, Luminora says, yep, it's shut down. I wonder why they shut it down. Because I know I was giving them all my money. Did I give them enough, give them enough to support their um, website? Uh, okay. that's. I'm sorry to end this on a bad note. But Luminara, thank you for letting us know that it is shut down. But, all right. Good day, good night, good morning to wherever you are in the world. And thank you for joining me on this live stream. And I'll check you, catch you next week. Saturday at the very same time. Right now, I am at 2 o'clock. Well, not right now. When it starts is 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So you can plug it into Google. 